Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The delightful children's book by R. Roberson Newman, Puka Bug and Pig, shows us that friendship can be found anywhere and at any time, sometimes in unusual circumstances, and teaches us about the willingness to help others and ability to trust. R. Roberson Newman educated children from preschool through third grade for eight years. She also spent 18 years advocating as a marketing liaison and events coordinator in the senior living and health field. She's a mentor, ordained associate minister. Rosemary volunteers at the local soup kitchen, assists families through difficult times, and she's the president of Strong to Encourage Foundation, which was created in honor of her son and gives scholarships to students majoring in art or English. R. Roberson Newman, author of Puka Bug and Pig, is our guest on This Week in America. Welcome to the program. A pleasure to have you with us here today. Thank you so much, Rick. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. What a delightful book that you've written here. Let's talk about the journey. How did this all begin for you, Puka Bug and Pig? What was the beginning of this story? Well, I'm a person who usually wakes up in the morning to either hearing a scripture or hearing a song in my head. And on Saturday, January the 18th of 2020, I woke up and heard the word right. So I got up and went to my desk and that was at 1.15 in the morning. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. And the words just flowed. I had written a book in 15 minutes on these pieces of paper here. So I have to say at the risk of sounding like the crazy lady, uh, I give all credit to the Lord Jesus. I say that he is the author and I'm just the co-author because I had no intentions of waking up at 115 to write a book. You know, that's amazing. In the middle of the night, you're, you you hear this word, you get up and you write the book. It's not like, okay, thank you. I'll go ahead and I'll start working on this and you go back to sleep. You actually began the process, had the process all written out. This was in 2020. The book uh, published now, it's available now. It took three years to publish. Why that lapse in time? What, what happened during that three-year period? Well, a lot was going on, but I really think that it was fear. Uh, for me, I think it was not the fear that what God had told me to do and the giving me a, the ability to do it in 15 minutes. I think it was a fear for myself, the fear of failure. I'm a person who encourages others and I would push others forward to reach their goals and their passions, but I don't always invest in myself. So I think it was a journey to walk out of fear into faith in not only who I serve, but also to have a little faith in myself. Well, it's amazing. And the background you have in dealing with young people, how did that come into play as you were telling this story, Puka Bug and Pig? Our guest is the author, R. Roberson Newman. I'll give you her website as we go through the program. Book available wherever books are sold. Link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. How big of an influence was that, the fact that you were in front of young people for so many years teaching them and sort of have, you know, the reaction, you know what it takes to hold their interest and to tell a story at that level. How influential was that in your writing? It was very influential. Uh, just being around kids all my life, I'm from a large family. I'm the youngest of eight kids. I have 26 nieces and nephews, and I can even tell you how many grand nieces and nephews <laughs> I have anymore. Uh, but then I have the privilege of being around other people's children um, through church and just through life, my friends, kids. And, but then again, also my own children had a big influence in how I think the book came to be and how it was written. I often called my kids my little piglets and my daughter Ladybug. Uh, but the characters in the book are loving characters. They are characters that I have seen mimic in the life of my kids to accept other people, no matter who they are or what they look like. And I've watched their friends. Uh, they have wonderful friends 
and uh, and then the kids that I see on a daily basis and and then as you look out in the world and you see kids in stores on the streets and it's just so much going on in the lives of children and they have so much to give yes. and I don't feel like we always give them the things that they need. So I thought in the book, this will give a ch me a chance to help their growth and help them to learn more about kindness and about giving of themselves and about exploring and learning about other worlds and not just their own because the world is so big and it's so beautiful. There's so many wonderful things to learn about each other and we just need to give each other the chance to do that. So many valuable lessons in Puka Bug and Pig that you we really need in real life now. And you have this in the form of the book, Puka Bug and Pig. It's a great book for a child to read, for you to read to a child, for you to read together with the child. It's a book you can go back. And there's so many stories that come out of each page as you're reading and talking about it. Beautifully illustrated. The book is available wherever books are sold. Her website, uh, Rosemary's website is r-roberson, that's R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N dash Newman dot squarespace dot com. Now that's a mouthful. I'll give it to you a couple more times. We have it on our website. So all you have to do is click it. That will take you right there to our website and, and get the information book available, of course, at Amazon, all of the usual places. Let's talk about this process of getting the book into the hands of young people. You, we talked about what it took to write the book. Publishing is something that's totally different. Talk about the decision to publish and being able to get it out there and what it was like when you saw your book holding holding it, looking at the cover for the first time. What was that experience like? Oh, it was a life-enhancing oh, yes. experience. Yes. Uh, when I decided to write the book, I had sent it to my daughter uh, first and asked her to read it to my then two-year-old granddaughter. And she told me when she finished reading the story to her that Brooklyn clapped her hands. So that <laughs> showed me that it was something that was reachable to a child as early as two years old. Uh, and it gave me the courage again and uh, just the, um, the courage and I think the, the strength yes. to move forward yes. in it. Uh, just trying to find the right words because there's so many emotions that come into your heart when you're trying to reach others uh, with words that flow from your own heart and your own mind. And you just want to be sure that you're saying the right thing and doing the right thing at this time in our history. So uh, I didn't know whether to go through the process of trying to get an agent and uh, get a larger publishing company to do this for me, independent publishing company. But my fear was that I would lose some of my rights to use an illustrator of my own, because yes. as you can see in the book, I'm using my niece as my illustrator. And she's a very talented young lady, and she has a background in education and she has a love for children as I do. So I wanted to, again, pull her forward and have that legacy for her as well as for myself. So I chose to go uh, into self-publishing so that I would be able to use her because usually when you don't, you don't get to choose your publisher, excuse me, your illustrator. Yes. And to see it, come to the house when it came to the house and I opened up the box and saw it it was that moment where you just thought okay <laughs> I can just tell now this oh, is yes. here it's it's something that I can hold in my hand it's something that I have achieved it's a legacy for my family I used my maiden name because I wanted to leave a legacy uh, for my parents to say that they had a part in this too, even though they're no longer with me, I just wanted them to know that I'm thinking about you even in this because my parents were the type of parents who read to us, who made up stories for us, uh, 
who I went on walks in the woods with and uh, explained, they would explain all of nature to us. So I'm so thankful uh, to be able to have done this and to um, leave that legacy, not only for my children, but to acknowledge my parents by using my maiden name as well. They would be quite proud, and that legacy continues in your storytelling, in your concern for young people, and how important it is to get the, the right message, the right foundation out there. And you touch on that uh, friendship. I, I keep mentioning that that's one of the keys, one of the themes in the book that is so well done. The illustrator, yeah, Amber Campbell, you, you mentioned before, what is that like when you actually, and now this being a family member, so it was extra special, but it's someone you know. They know you, so they know what you or attempting to do with the words. So I would think it'd be much easier for them to follow through. Okay, this is what uh, Rosemary wants. I can I can illustrate this. So often you see writers and illustrators that sort of clash because the illustrator has one idea in mind for the picture and uh, the author has, has another one. What was it like working with somebody that you know that was able to take your words and bring them to life on the page? Amber is such a gifted, talented young lady and such a beautiful heart. And I just kind of think that we mind melted there because she sent me the illustrations and I was so pleased with everything that she did. She put her heart into it. It was as if, if I was the person doing the illustrations. And the funny thing with this is, is that she's in North Carolina and I'm in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the difficult part, yes. just trying to reach each other at the right times of day because she was in school as well as working and I still work. But she was truly a godsend. She is an angel. I love her to pieces. She's like a daughter to me. Who is the targeted audience? I, and I say that and I'm thinking adults need to read this to you. You need to read it to the child and discuss this. Their message is there for all of us so well loved, so well developed and so well portrayed. But who is the, who's the target audience? Who, who did you design this specifically for? I designed it specifically for that pre-K segment of our society. Again, because I feel like children need to learn about kindness and goodness and trust. And that bad times don't always mean when life comes against us, it doesn't always mean that it's going to always be bad. There's something good can come out of bad things. When we feel like we've been pushed to the side, that we can learn things. Yes. But I also think the book is, as you said, for anyone, uh, I think anyone can glean from the book and the message of the book. But I really, really would like for kids to see more goodness because if they turn on TV, it doesn't look pretty positive out there. And, and they may hear their parents talking about the problems of the world, but I would love for kids to be able to be kids and just to enjoy the whole growth process and to be able to laugh and to imagine again and to use their own imaginations. So basically, younger kids, let's start young, raising them up with the good things and not so much negativity in life. This is a perfect addition to a family library that can be passed down from your children now to their children. And here's a book that's a great gift idea for any time of the year or just for a neighbor child or just a, a, a gift in general. The book is so well done, so well illustrated, Puka Thank Bug you. and Pig by R. Roberson Newman, our guest on the program. I'll give you her website as we go through. So why a pig and a ladybug? How did that come? How did that come about? Well, my family calls me um, a critter lover. Uh, <laughs> my neighbor calls me a tree hugger. <laughs> they are all true. I'm not ashamed to say. Well, good for you. I, I do love critters and I have an affection for pigs and I do love ladybugs. Uh, as I said earlier, I would call my kids my little piglets. And the reason why I like them so much is because with pigs, pigs are often looked at in a derogatory term. You hear people calling policemen pigs, 
uh, you hear women calling men pigs. Yes. <laughs> uh, however, a pig is very smart. And a pig never tries to be anything than what it is. And they give back to the world in so many ways. And we just saw on the news the other day about a pig's liver being used in a transplant. Yes. So pigs have a character that I really like. I, I think they're adorable to look at too. Uh, I just love pigs. And then a ladybug. It's so tiny, but they fly through storms or and they land in unusual spaces. Uh, it, they always surprise you when they show up. But when you see them, you always smell. So I like the characters that I see in the actual ladybug or pit that you see on Earth. I just think that they're wonderful creatures. The title of the book is Puka Bug and Pig. Why not Ladybug and Pig? Well, it began as Ladybug and Pig. Interesting. And then I learned that there are so many Ladybug books out there. Ah, okay. I, I wanted to be sure that uh, it stood out for what it is. And even though she is a Ladybug, she tells us that she's called Puka bug. Now the name Puka comes from my husband calling a daughter Puka. So I called my daughter and I explained that, hey, I'm writing, as you saw, the book is Ladybug and Pig, but I found out that there are so many other books named Ladybug or Ladybug Ann. And instead of infringing on their rights to have that as their title, I wanted something unique, but to still use the ladybug. So she gave me permission to use her nickname. <laughs> Thus, the name of the book, Puka Bug and Pig by R. Roberson Newman. Book available wherever books are sold. Uh, Amazon, of course, link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Her website is r-roberson, R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N, dash Newman, N-E-W-M-A-N, dot squarespace.com. That's a lot. We've got it on our website. You can just uh, go there and uh, link on to it. You can Google it and probably find it there as well. So this is really a family affair then, wasn't it? The more you talk, uh, the, the family was really uh, heavily involved in, in writing this book. Definitely. In every area, whether it was calling my niece Jackie for help in arranging my website, which I am not very good at that, uh, uh, to my daughter, Roger, of course, Brooklyn, my granddaughter, my husband, um, my niece, Amber, and all of those who were giving me encouraging words and pushing me forward. Definitely a family affair. Will there be other adventures of Puka Bug and, uh, and Pig? Yes, there are Ooh, other good. adventures. Good. Uh, Puka Bug and Pig, I hope we'll be around for a while. I have already written five other books for Puka Bug and Pig. I just haven't published them yet. I would just love to see our first book to fly. I'd like to see people to really become familiar with the characters and to love them as I love them. And then Amber and I will move forward with getting the other books out there. Fantastic. And you can follow that on her website. If you uh, just Google this book and click on her name, you'll find the other books when they're available. What would you like the audience to learn from Puka Bug and Pig? What messages do you hope resonate when, when they finished reading the book? Oh, there's so many messages in the book. Um, a message for me is that no matter how young you are or how old you are, there's still the opportunity to learn and to love and to trust and to have new adventures in life with people, uh, to learn about other people and who they are. I feel like right now we're at a stage in especially America and not to become political, but I just think that there's so much fear and if we would only take the chance to really get to know who we all are, we would yes. learn that there's beauty in everybody, no matter how we look or what other people think about us. 
there's something beautiful in every single person on the face of the earth. And we all have something to give, whether it's a shoulder to lean on, a hug when you need it, whether it's an encouraging word to tell you that you can be safe, or whether it's just being quiet during the storms of life. There are so many opportunities in just freeing ourselves up to with a simple hi. That's Hello. all it takes. Make eye contact and say hi and, or say, how are you doing today? And mean it, not just saying something as you're walking past and don't pay any attention to the response. But there's so many of those very simple elements in in Rosemary's book, Puka, Bug and Pig. A minute or so left in the program, I mentioned the the foundation that you have in, in honor of your son it, developing scholarships for people majoring in art or English. Just briefly tell me about that. That's so important. It seems like now we're attaching dollar signs to to education and you need to pursue this because you can come out and get a job right away. And boy, there's so much with, with the art and English and thinking and feeling that I hope we don't lose in all of this. Definitely. I'm very thankful that both of our children love to read and they are beautiful writers. Uh, and our son passed uh, in uh, 2009 from an automobile accident. But he was a beautiful writer and a great athlete, but he loved to write and he loved to read. And we have so many books in the house from both of our kids writing and reading. And um, I see that so many kids are not reading as much. Uh, they're spending a lot of time on their computers or yes. their phones, which is great because you can't read from there. But I think that reading takes you to so many different worlds and um, allows you to learn so much about yourself. And it encourages us to go out on new adventures and to travel. And when we can't travel, we can travel through a book. And I think we need to know what people are thinking through their writings. So uh, in the legacy for his legacy, and he, oh my goodness, he's just a beautiful artist as well. Uh, he was to actually be my illustrator. We had talked for years about writing a book, which there will be a book about Hookah Bug and Pitt that he influenced greatly, that he was going to be the illustrator and I would write the story with him. And I do have that story that will be coming forth in the future. So I just wanted to keep that going forth that, okay, he's not here to do it, but there's so many kids out there who are here, who can do that, who do have that in their hearts. And maybe they just need a little help, whether it's a community college, or just getting out there and just doing it on their own. I would like to give them the opportunity to help in that opportunity yes. uh, because I know that these are difficult times financially for a lot of families and to be able to just give a mustard seed into their growth uh, that blesses our heart like nothing else. and. We have given out scholarships at the high school that he and our daughter attended, uh, and uh, we're very thankful for that. I would like to get back on that, and we'll be having a fundraiser this year so that we can continue that blessing on someone else. What amazing legacy and memory. There's so much that you're doing to impact young people in a positive way. This book is, is part of it, Puka Bug and Pig by R. Roberson Newman. I'll give you the website one more time, r roberson squarespacecom That's on our website. You can go there, click it, and to take you directly to our website. Also, also uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. I'd like to thank King Pages Press, uh, the author's marketing consultant, for arranging our conversation today. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Congratulations on the success of Thanks. this book. Sounds like there are more coming, and hopefully we can talk about those as well. Thank you for being with us. 
Thank you so much. And I look very forward to speaking with you again and to your community. It has been a pleasure to have R. Roberson Newman, the author of the book, Puka Bug and Pig, our guest on the program. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.